perfect. We're here. Happy, happy Tuesday. I'm so excited that you're joining me today. My name is Wendy Lee from creativelyyours.com, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. So we have some fun, crafty time together today. I love this. I love being able to start off well. I know that we start our week on what? Monday, Sunday. I don't know how you technically work at it. But for me, we start our week on Tuesdays with our crafty fun. Yes. All right. Um, I've got a good one for you today, or at least I think it's a good one. Um, we are going to go through using a layout over and over and over again to create a large stack of cards in no time. So I will show you that in just a minute. Before we jump in, I wanted to let you know a few things. So this is our very last week of February, which means it's the last week of our celebration promotion. So this means last week to get free products from our celebration brochure for every $50 that you spend before shipping and tax, right? Which means it's also the last week to earn your spot in my celebration celebration event. So this is a customer appreciation event. I do each celebration. And I send you a free card class and we have an afternoon, a couple hours, uh, playing on Zoom and making our cards together. And of course, you don't have to participate on Zoom if you don't want to. You'll get the tutorial and the video recording afterwards. But we do have a good time gathering together. And I love uh, being able to do that for those of you that support me during this time of year. Well, all year long, of course, but especially during celebration, because then you get more rewards, right? So it's also the final week to get an additional $76 in free product when you join the Stampin' Up! family and buy the per and you purchase wow, the starter kit. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It is the absolute best deal. Um, I'm going to go live hopefully later today to talk about that. So if you've got any questions about um, the starter kit and what that means, I'm happy to answer those questions. So I'm um, hoping to go live later today to talk about that a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and switch over for our crafty fun. Oh, sneak peek behind me. Got some cards back up there. Those are some projects that we're gonna be doing at my upcoming bingo event. So let me go ahead and switch the camera over and we're gonna get started on today's fun project, right? All right, there we go. Hopefully it connected. Gotta love the delays that you get here. So let's see who's all here. So I see Jean, awesome. Susan, so glad you're here. Yes, we missed Jean last week, didn't we, Susan? All right, so today we are featuring the Happy Label stamp set um, and the coordinating punch that goes along with that. I love a good sentiment stamp set because they are, they just make card making fast and easy and it gives you a lot of variety and this one is fun it's got lots of um great maybe not your typical what you'd send a card for i mean some of them yes for sure but i love that it's just kind of a um why not send me a card or send a card to a friend type of stamp set um so yeah i i think this is a lot of fun so we're going to be featuring this stamp set actually at my bingo event so we do a bingo and card class um every quarter actually so our next one is coming up i blunt i'm gonna say the date probably wrong but it's march in my mind it's march 18th but let's see it's that saturday what is that saturday in march yes the 18th and we will be making three projects and there'll be an opportunity to uh earn three additional projects uh using the same products but let me show you today's project, what we are going to make. So let me slide this over. And I've actually got multiple colorways, and we're going to make a colorway of this today. So I wanted to show you guys that you can take a simple card layout like this, right? And you can change your paper. So this is all from our Dandy Designs Designer Series paper that is in our celebration brochure. So this is the last week to get your hands on this fantastic paper pack. So here's one. Here's a second colorway. Here's another one. They're just so fresh and fun and vibrant. Another one. And we're going to do a, a fifth one today. So, so fun. So I've just changed some of the colors around, brought the designer papers in there. You can see we've got it on the inside as well, bringing those colors in. So fun and cheerful. 
love it, love it, love it. And you can change your colors around to be whatever you want. But this is a fast, 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 fast card layout. Um, you can do this with any designer paper and just about any stamp set. So it's just really a really great way to make a quick stack of cards because, you know, we don't want to go out and have to buy a boring card for 10 bucks when we can make a fantastic card, right? And do you see the extra texture we've got? I've pulled in that sweet citrus uh, embossing folder. That's a hybrid embossing folder. And if you're not familiar with that, Stampin' Up! will make hybrid embossing folders that um, the die will fit into the embossing folder. So you can either use it individually or each item individually, the dies and the embossing folder, or use them together as a hybrid and cut out and emboss at the same time, which is fantastic. I love it. Hey, Kimberly, so glad you're here as well. Oh, Susan, yes. Celebration, our celebration celebration is always fun. I love it. I should have brought the cards to show you guys what we're going to make. I've got four fantastic, uh, simple, fun folds that are gorgeous that, that everyone's going to love, I think. So I'll show you guys those next Tuesday. So you have to come back and see the sneak peek, right? Yes, because next Tuesday will be your very last chance to earn your spot in the event. All right, so let's slide this over. Let's get started with this today. And we'll move all of this out of our way and get started with our card base. All right, I am starting with thick, basic weight cardstock, four and a quarter by 11. I'm gonna fold this in half. Now, when I use white or vanilla, I like to use thick for my card bases. I think it's um, it's a little sturdier, it's nicer, um, you know, all that fun stuff. So then I pulled in a piece of the dandy design. So you guys, you know this, right? What did I do with that celebration brochure? Dun, 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 there it is. All right, so dandy designs, making sure you guys know this paper pack. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go, here we go. It's this one right here on this page, this right here. I wanna say this is probably, you know, it's always hard for me to pick one thing, but this is probably my favorite in the uh, catalog, right? In the celebration catalog. I, I've, I've gotten multiple packs, I'll say that. So it is a 12 by 12 paper stack. And when I say stack, it's 48 sheets. So you get four of each of these 12 uh, double-sided designs. So it goes a long way and it's got great colors. Um, you can make the projects look a little more pastel -y, or you can make them a little brighter, mix and match other colors. And um, so super versatile. And you can see that in these samples here, as well as the samples I made. So we are featuring this paper in our bingo event. Plus I'm also featuring this paper as a gift to those in my cultivated creativity from March. Yes, 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 our March kit. All right, so let's start off. I've cut a piece of the designer paper the same size as the card base. Now, I know this is probably not the best use of your designer paper because it's using four and a quarter by five and a half, right? So you can only get two, two across and two down when you do that, but there we go. Now my seal is running. My seal wasn't running, so I pulled in my silicone craft sheet to get it to help me get that pulled out again. Let's move that over. Um, so, but I think sometimes it's just fun, and we have a lot. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of designer series paper. So sometimes covering the full card front is okay, right? Got to do that sometimes. All right, so next I've got my piece of, I'm using uh, Granny Apple Green here, and I've already run it through this Sweet Citrus Hybrid Embossing Folder. So it is just embossed. I did not die cut it, but I think that's a fun, fun embossing folder. So we are featuring this Sweet Citrus Bundle as our featured stamp bundle for our next Cultivated Creativity Kit. So we just finished up Regency Park and those kits I've already got them in works. They will be mailed out no later than the 1st of March. Uh, so you guys will get, all of you that uh, are part of that membership program will get your kits hopefully quickly. And then uh, the next month we'll be getting Sweet Citrus, which is awesome. And I'm uh, adding an option to add additional kits, cut kits to your packets for this next month as well. So if you're a club member on that, 
uh, you'll be able to participate. And if you've missed past kits, um, I've now, uh, as of today, I posted the uh, sweetest cherries as well as the share and milkshake tutorials are now available for purchase. All right, so I'm gonna adhere this piece of designer paper right to that embossed layer. There's just so much going on. If you guys have questions on anything, because I know it can be very, very confusing when we've got a lot of different things going on. The easiest way to stay up to date with what I have going on is to uh, join my email list. You know what? I did not grab my linen thread. I thought I had everything I needed this time, but nope. Need some linen thread. We'll grab that. You could use any ribbon you want, but I, I like the linen thread for this. So I'm going to use about 26 inches or so if you like to cut yours off. I usually just leave mine on. And so I'm just going to leave a little bit of length out here to uh, tie my bow. And I'm going to wrap this around once, twice. It's sort of three times. I've got three going across there, but it's two full, two full wraps around there. And then let's go ahead and just clip this off. Make it a little easier to tie, I think. Perfect. Now, I'm not going to stress out on where my bow is going to end, end up right this minute because I can always slide this over if I need to. So I'm more worried about ending up with somewhat the same of the linen thread. It's close. It's uh, not quite centered, but it's all right. So I'm going to make my little loops and tie my bow. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be okay with that. All right, so if I wanna slide this over, I'm just gonna bend my cardstock just a smidge and I can just kind of slide that a little bit. You just have to be careful that it doesn't tear the edge, right? Because you put too much pressure on it. And I'm gonna just kind of spread these out just a little bit, give it a little more. You're not even gonna see it on this one side. I don't know why I care over there, but that's all right. And I might be a little too far in, but I'm I'm going to go with this. I kind of like that. All right, let's pop this up on our card front. Again, you guys know I love all the depth, but if you don't want it popped up, don't pop it up. You can do this flat as well. It'll be just fine. So since I am popping it up, I am going to be a little more excessive maybe with my dimensionals than I might normally. Take those backings off. You guys are gonna be shocked at how quickly we are done with this. All right, and I know I am putting the layers crooked on the front. I know this would put Sheila, my friend Sheila, Sheila over the top. She's getting better with it though, outside of her comfort zone, right? <laughs> Poor Sheila. All right, so now I'm gonna pull in the coordinating punch and I like this, it kind of makes a, a little like a ticket edge on one and then a little scallopy edge on the other. So I'm gonna unlock that punch by sliding that over. I'm gonna slide this paper right in. And I like to use this upside down so I can see that that's centered. And I like to butt it all the way up to the edge. So then I'll just squeeze it and it will clip off that little end, that fun. And then we'll do the same thing on the other end. All right, so that's on my white layer. And then I've got a piece of pool party that I'm gonna do the same exact thing to. So I made the pool party uh, about a quarter of an inch longer so that it's gonna stick out when we get this all together. All right, perfect. And then when you're done with your punch, you just squeeze and lock that back into place. It's ready to store, all good. All right, so we've got our little tickets here and I wanna stamp my sentiments. So let's bring in a foam pad, scrap piece of paper. And I am gonna stamp, where's my stamps? They're here, where did I bury them? Oh, I totally buried them. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use gorgeous grape ink for this one. Use that on a few of them. I really like that color with this combination. Bright and cheerful. And I'm going to do You Are My Happy Place. You could choose any of those sentiments that you wanted to. And I can't tell if I'm straight, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about it either because I'm making some things crooked on here intentionally. So it's going to um, lean itself to being very nice and easy to deal with. Yes, okay. Let me move that out of the way for now. All right, so we are going to adhere these together. I'm just gonna use a little stamp and seal. And then I'm gonna offset that. So I'm just, I'm, I'm intentionally making that a little bit crooked. So you see that whole party sticking out, love it. 
and then we'll put some dimensionals on here as well. Now I did that because I have that uh, linen thread going across my layer that I'm going to put this over the top of. So I want to make sure that I have some of it that will um, get both sides of where that linen thread is. Okay, so now I want to put this, I keep pulling it towards me. I want to slide this in here. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that placement. So I don't want this to go past the edge, but I like it. I like it going out past the edge of these layers. And then I've got this over here. And it's okay if my knot is not exposed. You can have it exposed or you don't have to. But isn't that cute? And you can't really tell, or you can tell maybe, that my stamping is just a smidge crooked. So you could adjust this as needed to make it look as, you know, let's see if I can lift that up, make my stamping look a little straighter. And it's okay if my um, tickets are crooked, right? Kind of fun, right? I think it's cool. Let's bring in our take your pick and these heart pearls. Have you guys used these? These are in the annual catalog. I didn't even see them there for a long, long time. And so I've recently discovered them and they're kind of fun. So you've got some shiny hearts and then you've got some real pearlescent ones and then you've got some um, kind of frosted ones. All three are fabulous on this card. Uh, let me see. I think I used all of them. So this one has the frosted, this one has the shiny, that's got the pearly, and that's got the frosted as well. I'm gonna use, let's see, what do we wanna use this time? Let's use the pearl, I like it. Oh good, you guys are liking this, good. So I found, for me, I needed to place or pick these up with my take your pick at the top of the heart to get my orientation because they are directional because they're heart shaped, right? So if I can pick them up at the flattest, the top of it, I do much better with the orientation of placing it on the card. So I'm just gonna add one to the label and a couple, sprinkle a couple out there, just a little grouping of three. You could add more if you wanted to, but I think that's a nice subtle touch, right? So cute. All right, let's do the inside. So on the inside, you can see I brought in a piece of the designer paper and a piece of cardstock, just like I did on the outside, right? So we're going to do that same thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and normally I would stamp first and then put the paper down. But because of the angle that I'm doing this at, where's my silicone? There we go. Silicone craft sheet to the rescue. Um, because I'm doing these at an angle, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down and just risk it. Maybe we won't push real hard in case we need to lift this back up. All right, I'm gonna go with that. I'm not gonna push down hard and I'm gonna stamp yay in grape. We we'll grab our grape ink pad and our yay. And you know what? I do want my foam pad underneath this. This stamp that I found, I, I personally stamped better. My images were better if I went ahead and used the foam pad underneath. Okay, so this can be a little deceiving to your mind because you're intentionally crooked on the layer, but I want it to look straight to the bottom. And that's why I went ahead and adhered that down. Even though I know that that can be risky sometimes, right? We could have always added another layer or carefully pulled it off and replaced it if need be. But kind of nice, right? Fun. So you can mix and match all these different colors and they all turn out. Let's see if we can get them all in here so you can see them all. So here I mixed in this paper, same paper that I used there. That's one of my favorite prints. And I use the same purple here, use the plaid side. There's more prints in this pack than what I've even shown here. But um, I just pulled out some of my favorite combinations and put them in there. And I think they're fun. So you could have a stack of cards in no time. And of course, while I use the sweet citrus here, you could use any embossing folder. It just adds a really nice uh, pop of texture in there. Um, so that's kind of nice. All right, Susan, when Stampin' Up! changes out colors, do they carry over some or are they all new colors? Excellent question. So rumor has it, we are having a color refresh. So I actually was shocked that we didn't have one last year, but um, Stampin' Up! does like to keep our colors fresh and they're very good about 
uh, color coordination and making sure that we are on trend with color. So um, if you're really familiar with the color situation with Stampin' Up, we have four core color families. We have our brights, our subtles, our regals, and our neutrals. And then we have two in color um, choices. So we have, uh, and each of those are five sets and those rotate in and out every two years, they change up. So we have some fresh colors to complement the color palette. So, um, when they retire a color, yes, Susan, they retire the color. So that means typically that means there's no product available in that color once it retires. So if you love a color, I highly recommend you stock up on your favorite colors now. Take advantage of celebration. Get those extra free perks. We're hearing that we're going to know the first week of March what the color change is going to be. Now, I don't know if they're going to come right out and tell us everything or if we're going to start getting teasers. We don't really know. But yes, typically when they announce the colors that are retiring, they sell out very, very quickly. So you want to make sure you have full packs of cardstock, you have your ink pads and your re-inkers to go with your ink pads because once they're gone, many times you can't get them again. Every once in a while, some inventory can show up on the uh, clearance rack, which, oh, by the way, there's some updates to the clearance rack today that you guys definitely want to go out and check out when you're shopping. Um, yes, the Regal settles. Um, yes, the, the core color families do change when they do a color refresh. We had one year where 30 colors were changed. I hope we don't see anything that extreme this year, but it really just depends on if our color palette is, is, um, fresh enough, right? You, I think we all probably have colors that we just haven't used in a really long time because they just don't make sense. Right. Um, and sometimes Stampin' Up! will introduce an in color that that brings that, that kind of revives that older color that we've had for a while. So yes, we could see anything goes with a color refresh. So we could see things, I've seen things move from one color family to another. For instance, long, long, long ago, real red was a bright color versus a regal's color, right? So we've seen things like that. We could see things where uh, colors like Pretty Peacock, which rumor has it is coming back, right? So Pretty Peacock, which was an in-color a few years ago, could become one of our core colors. That has happened in the past as well. I'm trying to think of a color that that was relevant with that we've gotten the line now. Jane will remember better than I am. In my mind, like Flirty Flamingo might have been an in-color years ago. I'm not really sure. Um, but yes, anything goes. So yeah, Jean's saying about 10 colors typically change out. Um, sometimes we see more, sometimes we see fewer, but I, I think this is going to be a pretty big change. Again, it's a gut feeling. I don't know anything for sure. Other than we know that we have five in colors that are going out. So let, let me grab a catalog and, and see if I can show you that. Looks like I don't. Oh yeah, I do. I guess I can pull out my annual catalog, but I, um, mine has writing in it. I don't know. Do you guys write in your catalogs? I have to write in my catalog so I know what I have, right? So I don't repurchase the same things over and over and over again. Okay. Hopefully I'm in screen here. So these are our, these are our color collections, 122 and 123 of the annual catalog. So you can see the end colors, 2022, 2024. These colors will be around at least through 2024. So this color family here, the one that just started this, this catalog. So Sweet Sarbay, Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Starry Sky, and Orchid Oasis. These colors here, Polished Pink, Pale Papaya, Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent, and Fresh Freesia, my favorite, are on the docket to retire. They could, some of them could, end up in our core colors, right? So let's, let's, let me just guess. Let's say fresh freesia, because it's my favorite, um, gets put into our core colors. Maybe it would go in the subtles. So maybe pear pizzazz is going away. I don't know. I'm guessing. So don't, don't quote me on colors. I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's staying. I don't know what's going. I don't know what's new. Um, we will find out hopefully the first week of March is what I'm hearing. But again, if you've got colors that you love or you've got ink pads that you don't have ink refills for, 
go ahead and get them now. You are going to be sad if you go out to order them and they are no longer available because again, once they announce the retired list, colors tend to disappear very, very quickly. So that's my best advice to you. Um, get your favorites and, you know, and maybe you have too many favorites and you can't, you, you know, it doesn't fit in your budget to do the full packs of cardstock. You could do the assorted packs as well um, and get a few of each of the colors. So that's entirely up to you on how you want to go about that. But I do um, highly recommend that, that is something that you stock up on. And same thing goes for the accessories, right? So um, if you love any of the, the gems and, and ribbons that coordinate, um, a lot of times those retire from catalog to catalog, those color specific ones. Every once in a while they carry over. So I can't say that they will for sure retire, but uh, typically they do. So if you've got some favorites, definitely get them. Yeah, so Susan, I believe we will see the retiring list in April. Although maybe they'll give us some information in March since they're giving us some color information. But typically we see it the month before um, the month before it goes out. So our catalog ends what May. Let me look. Catalog ends May 1st. So this catalog will end May 1st, and the new annual catalog will start May 2nd. So we should know a month ahead of time. Hopefully that helps. Now, this is another great reason to consider joining uh, my Diamonds Demonstrator team, um, because that also means that in April, we will have dibs on new products before, before it's available to our customers. So if you're someone that enjoys getting your hands on products early, the first to have it, then uh, that may be, that may be something that you consider, right? Okay, did I answer all the questions? I sure hope I did. So I will, of course, share any information I've got out to my email list as soon as I have it. So um, if you are not already on my email list, um, there is a link. If you do the show more on the video and scroll down, there is a link to join my email list. I do send out a uh, tutorial bundle every month for my subscribers. Um, and there are 12 fabulous projects in that bundle. Um, I get a lot of good feedback on those. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, something to, to consider and check out. All right, perfect. I love that you guys all joined me today. If you enjoyed this project, give me a thumbs up, share it with your crafty friends. If you're not already a follower to my YouTube channel or if you're watching this on Facebook, please follow. Um, and that way you can see when I'm going live. So I've been uh, doing the past few weeks trying to schedule this so that it hopefully is working out a little bit easier for you guys to find, find me when it's time to go live. So um, I will continue to keep trying that and improving on that each, each week. I figured out how to turn on closed captions this week, <laughs> right? Uh, too fun. All right. If you've got questions on anything, feel free to reach out to me. Leave a comment on the video. I'll answer back. Um, and again, I'm going to try to go live later this afternoon to answer questions about joining my Diamonds team and uh, clarify some misconceptions about uh, becoming a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful week. And I am looking forward to seeing you again next Tuesday for more Crafty Fun. All righty. And bye for now.